Welcome to video number 18 of the Excel for Stock Market series where we create 30 different Excel templates for stock market and publish them as 30 different videos in 30 days. If you haven't watched any of the previous videos, please check them out. And if you want to download any of these templates, please visit inzara.com. In today's video, we'll talk about the awesome oscillator technical indicator and the concept behind it. And for the second part of the video, we'll talk about how you can use our template to create this technical indicator for any stock that you're interested in. So now let's get started. First about the concept. The awesome oscillator is, is an oscillator, which means that it's gonna oscillate uh, around um, the zero line. And this is because the way the formula is um, calculated, it is taking a difference between two simple moving averages. So let's use an example to illustrate um, this calculation. So let's say, for example, we have the high and low prices for a certain stock and we have it for every day. And so what we're trying to do now here is to calculate what was the oscillator value for March 31st. In order to do so, we need to calculate two simple moving averages. And if you are interested in knowing more about the simple moving average, please check out our other video, which we did a few days ago around the simple moving average technical indicator. In this case, we are using two simple moving averages. So the orange indicates the simple moving average for five periods. So if we take these five periods and we want to calculate the simple moving average. And what are we calculating the simple moving average for? We are calculating it on midpoint. So what is a midpoint? A midpoint is a calculation which basically takes the highest point price point for the day and the lowest and it finds the midpoint. So basically middle between the high and the low. So we first calculate the midpoint for all of the days and then we calculate the simple moving average of the midpoint, let's say for five periods. So that's our first simple moving average. Then we also calculate the simple moving average for 34 periods. So if I go all the way back, I would have to calculate for 34 periods. Okay. So take the simple moving average of five periods, which is reflecting what is the more recent trend. And then the simple moving average of 34 periods represent a little bit longer than um, longer trend. And if you take the difference, that is the awesome oscillator value. And in this case, we did the simple moving average 234 is the shorter one, 235.34 is the longer one. And we take the difference and it's negative minus 1.15. And as I indicated, it's an oscillator. It oscillates above and below the zero line. So in this case, it's negative 1.15 because the moving average for the longer window was higher. The shorter window is lower that's why you end up having a negative value because um, it indicates a certain directional trend, which is negative. Okay, so that's the awesome oscillator calculations and um, how they can be calculated for any stock. And we used um, a daily trend. This could also be used if you have intraday values also, but I'm just gonna keep it simple because right now the Excel, Microsoft Excel service only provides daily value. It doesn't provide like minute by minute or every 15 minutes um, history uh, of all the stock uh, price information. So now let's talk about how our template works. So if I go to the awesome oscillator, so this is what it looks. And I have provided a link here to an article on trading view, uh, which I've used along with other many different uh, websites when I searched and researched about these technical indicators, whatever I could learn, and I've tried to implement this in Excel in these templates. So please check them, please check that article out if you want more information about the technical um, concepts behind such technical indicators. Now, how do we use this template? So first on the top left, you go and type in um, any stock uh, exchange abbreviation. So I'm gonna just do XNAS. And I can do, uh, let's see, here we have Tesla. So I'm gonna do Apple, AAPL, enter. So now you can see that it actually is going and pulling that information right now from the service. 
if you have Microsoft 365 plan um, uh, or if you use the free Excel for the web product, then this template will work to go and pull the data from the service. Uh, if you don't have any of those, then they, you will not be able to pull the real uh, live data from the service. But we will provide links to those in the video description. So if you don't have it, you can check them out. Now, once you type the stock symbol, you saw that the price indicator came up and then you have the, um, you know, the price change and you have on the top um, the bar here certain um, certain things you can change about the chart. So I can change it for a three month period or I can change for year to date. So you can see how this changes. I can also change for, let me go back to one year. And now I will have a lot more history. Now I can change this to weekly uh, interval and now it'll go and plot one per week and I can do monthly, there we go. So you can see how the, the, the information gets updated as soon as I'm typing in and you will see that with the, when we do the daily for six months, it goes back until October because right now we are in April 2021. So it goes back six months and you can um, the green and the red bars that you see are the awesome oscillator values. Why are they green? Why are they red? It depends on whether the value is greater than the previous value, then it will be green indicating positive movement. If the current value of the oscillator is less than the previous, then it will show negative uh, red in color. But basically it's one value, only the color is changing depending on whether it's greater or less than the previous value. And then the um, when you see it go down um, here, um, that means it is below its negative. So any of these data points here, so this indicates on the 26th February, minus 8.43 is the oscillator value. And if I look at a positive one here, it'll say 27 January, the value was 9.43. So the oscillator values are you know, shown in these little bars or histograms. And then the blue line indicates the source. Um, the source here, um, if I want to change this to the closing price, and now you see that it changed to the closing price. The blue line is represented by the source, uh, is representing the source, and you can change it to maybe if I want to use volume, you can change that. This is the trading volume. So the most common used one I would say is close. So I'm just putting that as a default option. Keep in mind that due to the nature of the calculation of the awesome oscillator, you saw that we were only using the high and the low to calculate the midpoint. We never used the closing price. So the closing price doesn't really play a role in the awesome oscillator. And um, compared to the other indicators that we have seen before, when you change the source, the calculations of the technical indicator would change. But in this case, it doesn't change. In this case, the technical indicator is purely based on the high and the low and taking the midpoint of that. So you cannot modify that using these input parameters. What you can change is only the blue line, what is getting displayed. The, the technical indicator value doesn't change. Okay. Now, two input parameters for the technical indicators was what was the short window, short length, and then the longer one, right? So five and 34 are the most commonly used, but I've also made it flexible. So you can type in what you would like that short and the long to be. So if I want the short to be 10, and then you, you, this will definitely change the technical indicator value. And you saw the bars change. And then the high, the, the longer one, let's say 50, and now I have my own version of the oscillator using 10 and 50 periods as inputs instead of the five and 34, which is the default um, value used by traders in this technical indicator. Now for the last part, I wanna talk about these red um, circles called the sell signals, and then the green triangles called the buy signals. And as I've explained in the, all the previous videos, these are to illustrate how we can use Excel to create our buy and sell trading signal strategies on the chart automatically. I'm not saying this is the only methodology that is recommended. I'm just saying that I've taken whatever I've learned from these websites and books and then trying to um, come up with what's more common. 
but you're welcome to change this logic if you would like to. And if you are an experienced trader and want to provide uh, inputs to what I should be adding here, please do so in the comments below. So let me explain what I've done here. When the, os um, when the awesome oscillator value crosses above the zero line, then I'm saying it's a buy. So let me show you an example. Here, you saw that at this point, um, it, it moved from under, so this one is minus 1.38 on the 6th November 2020. And then when I go to the next point, then it becomes a positive value. Let me zoom in. On the 9th November, it became 0.39. So it, it went from negative to positive. So it crosses the zero line. And so I'm saying then that's a buy signal. So that's the logic there. So let's use a, a red uh, cell signal to explain. So here on, um, let's say for example, and again, these are very small bars. So let me zoom in a little bit more. Oh, it is really hard. 16th February, 1.33. And then when I go to this value, 17th February 0.27, so it's a positive number. But when I go to 18th February, it went to minus 0.9, which went from positive to negative. So it crossed below the zero line. Then I'm saying that's a sell signal um, on that data point. So that is how the trading signal strategies have been defined in this template. But if you want to make up your own um, logic, then you can go unhide help sheet and then you have a lot of calculations here, but what I want you to focus on is column Y called a signal. And this if then function is, if function is what I'm using to determine when to buy and when to sell, exactly this part. So if, as I was explaining, that logic has been with a simple if formula here, you can change this according to your needs and change how you define your trading signals. That's it. Once you change that formula, just one formula, that's how you can make up your own um, trading strategy signals and everything in the chart will automatically update for you. Okay, so that's all I wanted to cover in this video. To wrap it up, we talked about the concept behind the awesome oscillator, how you can calculate it technically. And then we talked about our template and how you can type in any stock symbol and then go ahead and get, um, let me see if that is forward. Okay, so this is a good example to remind, and we've talked about this in a lot of previous videos, but if you don't know the exchange, so for example, I want to pick up Ford, uh, Ford Motor Company, oh, it is in the New York Stock Exchange, not in NASDAQ, I can just hit select, there you go, uh, New York Stock Exchange, Ford, you saw how quickly, uh, you know, within a second, or maybe two at the most, you can get instant information about any stock symbol, nicely plotted, all the calculations taken care of. Download this template for free from inzara.com. If you have any suggestions on how to make these templates better or how to make these videos better, please post them in the video comments below. And I will see you tomorrow in another video about another technical indicator. Thank you very much for watching.